outside seminary. What you can see is currently no reading. All right. If I put this on, the value is reading. Do, 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 do. Give it a second. Okay. Do you believe, looking at this, that my pulse ox is 97%? That's what the monitor reads. Yes or no, and why? Yes. Yeah. I believe it. Why? Because it measures the amount of, it measures the wavelengths. It's okay. But how do you know that the machine is accurate? The, the issue is always, is the machine measuring accurately? Mm. Do me a favor. Because it's giving a ball stuff. That's it. There is a pulse a wave. ball a wave with each one. Do me a favor for a second. Give me your finger, please. Okay. Well it doesn't matter which one we use. Okay. Alright. Because Alright. Turn your wrist over for a second. I will try not to hurt you. Okay? What you will see is I can block out blood flow. This is your basic Allen's test, in case you're wondering. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, do you believe this number? No. 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 You know, even though it showed me a heart rate and showed me a saturation, you can't believe it because the feedback says, well, if you don't see a good bar mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, it, some of them may be a bar going up and down. But if you don't see a good waveform, then you assume that the machine is not detecting a good pulse, and you just can't report that number. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are we good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, also true is that this machine can act okay, as a pulse as an entitled CO2 monitor. There are two things about it. And Miss Tedessa, you want to do me a favor? Okay. This machine has a, th this is called mainstream. Okay. What will occur is that the, okay. the analysis of the entitled CO2 will happen directly here. Okay. This is where the infrared is going to occur. There, it will require a, uh, it's called a cuvette or adapter, and that adapter will fit onto a artificial airway and to a ventilator circuit. Okay, there is on this a arrow. Okay, and then there's an arrow on this one the same way. Mm -hmm. So you want to line them up before you use it. You have to calibrate it. And calibration requires that you have a low and a high. We talked about that. You start, if you do the low is correct and the high is correct, then everything along that line is correct. We good? Okay. So, it should say, kill that for a second. Okay. Yes, check adapter. Okay. Now, you want to press, which one do I press? The up, up button, right? Okay. It will walk you through it. All right. And you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. If you attach the probe in the correct manner to this thing that says zero, see where it says zero? All right, attach it to zero. Is it the right way or the wrong way? Turn, turn, turn this, this way. Now, okay, so you want to align, eh, you don't see the good ones. Align that. Okay? What will happen, you did turn it to the zero, on the zero one, right? Where the, Oh, no, no wrong one. Ones. Go to the zero one, please. <laughs> Have me worried. <laughs> okay. All right, so 
Uh, not requ not required. Okay. It tells you you don't have to do that. So no. now take it to the other one, which is we your reference. Is now go to the high one. Okay. It will read, there is a built-in change of wavelength, infrared, which will come out to be a CO2 of about 37. When it's passed, you can remove it. Okay, and take this, get rid of this, and it will tell you to attach that, align this this way, and look at the triangles, is it, is it correct? It won't completely clip, it got broken. Probably the other way. See this here? You see that there? Okay, so it goes. Okay? Okay. Now. Okay. This is the waveform. What you're going to look at is when I take a breath in, this bar goes down to zero, mm -hmm. and then when I exhale, it goes up, and it looks almost like a square wave on a ventilator. It's mm -hmm. that pattern up, across, and down. Mm -hmm. Okay? So watch. We okay? Mm -hmm. Now the so thing. You breathe in right here. This uh huh. In That's right exactly here. correct. So you breathe, and now you just breathe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this measure the end tidal. Mm hmm. The um, ending portion of this CO two. CO two, which will be about thirty four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now it's going to be. A I can't get a good seal because it's over my yeah. hand. Mm -hmm. But what I want you to notice is this is they would use this in a type of machine for sleep apnea. All right. So what I will do is breathe normal for a little while, and you'll see what number I get. Mm -hmm. Then I'll hold my breath because that's what happens in sleep apnea. When they're holding the breath, it stays low. Mm -hmm. But when they exhale, because it will go higher than baseline. And that's one of the ways they identify that the person has, in fact, had an apneic episode. Mm -hmm. Are you, you ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Baseline's about 37. Mm -hmm. You pull your bra. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Goes way up. Yep. Yeah. Right? Because I have not exhaled. Exhale. Mm -hmm. And when you look at these, th these are wonderful machines, you know, is but as long as you get a square wave at the top, you can br 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 believe the machine. Okay. When we see Mm-hmm. What is it doing? Oh. I think it's this. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Mm hmm That's what I wanted you to see. You know, but just, and that's what they would use it for, because if the person goes into some sort of either central or obstructive sleep apnea, mm -hmm. there is no CO2 being removed, even if the person is making respiratory efforts with obstructive sleep mm -hmm. apnea. But when the airway finally opens up, there's a sudden spike, and that's part of what they are identifying. Okay? Mm -hmm.